Hello, my name is Mona Sapas. I'm from Sumas. I reside in Skokil. I'm a First Nations lady. For our next generation, I would like to see our language passed on as um, for myself, I did not, I was not a language speaker. My mother and father, my family was fluent and uh, I had to go to school to learn my language. And we had speakers when I went to school. I can't remember the year, but uh, I have been here at least 15 years to help teach the language and culture in our class here. And uh, that I feel that that is the very root and the base for children to know who they are, their identity, and to take it along with them. I feel it's very important. I have a history myself of having to learn who I was and where I came from. And when I was able to do that for myself, then I started to grow as a human being, a person in, uh, in the today's world. I feel very strongly of the language, about the language, that language is culture and does identify a person. So. Our language is the Halkamalam language, and it's almost lost. The, our elders who taught it had a group, and they were the Kokalitsa elders. I am now a part of that group reviving and have been working with uh, my granddaughter and other people who are interested in learning. My granddaughter is also a language teacher now, and she's 21 or two. But um, when our elders taught the language here, they knew it. They were fluent. They had to learn to read and write. It was a new education for them. My mom did not read and write herself. She did everything orally and uh, it was hard for her but I felt it was a good way to learn it orally. I, I, I can read and write it but not to perfection. I took a year of language um, through SFU and Fraser Valley College and worked with a linguistic and 12 of us went back to school to become language teachers and we're still out there some of us are some have passed but I'm still here and sharing what I can with the children and I do as well at home and everywhere I go I'll share what I know my granddaughter and my grandsons the children take language in school so when they are good at it, we encourage them to continue. And my granddaughter went right on to teaching, and she's an awesome teacher, but she's in school right now studying. So it's kind of put on the back burner, but she says she'll come back. She'll continue. It's very hard. Yeah. We have one fluent speaker that I know of that is really fluent. She's my mom's foster niece. Oh, uh -huh. that's wonderful. Elizabeth Phillips. Oh, yeah, okay. she's, my mom was raised with her family. Is she teaching as well? Oh, as much terrific. as she can, and she learned to read and write and use the computer. Oh, yeah. That's terrific. Yeah. She's a little bit younger than I, but that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Sure. We look at our elders book, and we have out a uh, an elder's Sialaquas, I think it's called. I can't right off the top of my head. But um, there's only her, and I can't think. There's a couple more that are still alive. 
-hmm. And then we look at the whole group and they've all passed on. It's an old generation. So it's up to us to pick it up and continue with it as much as we can. Well, at home, I do use the language whenever I can, and I'll use it to ask for something like, I'll sleep a tea, I need tea, or I want tea, or I'll sleep a kiapi, or similar things I'll ask the kids, and they're happy to go and do it for me because I know they understood me. So it's little tricks and songs. I love the songs. Right now, we're doing a bit of Christmas jingle bells and there's a lot of different Christmas songs that we do in Hokamalum. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We learned to do Silent Night and when I was with my group we did Silent Night and were invited to do it in a church. Well we went to the church and we sang Silent Night. And we also added a few more songs. We did an honor song, and we did um, Jingle Bells. And they almost had to ask us to leave once we were there because we were drumming and we were honoring a teacher that we had from SFU. Uh -huh. It was very, <laughs> it was good. That's wonderful. And that's not what we were invited to do. <laughs> so just Silent Night in many languages, they did it, and we did it in ours. Oh. I was so proud to do that. I bet. Yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. My mom's favorite song. I guess the most important thing for me is respecting, respecting each other, respecting the environment and what you have and who you have. It's like there's very little of it I find left from what I was raised with. And uh, it's hard to see it disappear. So, and in the stories that we were taught or listened to, there was always a lesson, always a teaching behind the story. So there's so many of them. The one that sticks in my mind right now is the Hia, the child snatcher, and she, she was in the story to warn children about dangers at night and dangers that could be out there if you're not at home where you belong and not doing what you should, that something might happen to you. And they're kind of a lot of scary stories, but they seem to work when I was growing up. And I'm sure they could be implemented, implemented into today's out, out in the streets and out in things that are going on. I find it's a lot more than when I was growing up. A lot more to worry about because I do it myself. I worry a lot about my grandchildren and things out there. The older children in the center where you're working with zero to six and we're kind of limited to what we can really talk about. But I do share when we're doing tea time in the kitchen, I'll share the foods with them. They'll give me something, they'll serve me, or I'll say satisfied the kwa'op, and that means pass me, and they they listen, the little teeny ones, so, and I tell them, I name their foods in Hulkamalum, their fruits and that, and then at playtime, I'll name some of the animals and whatnot for them, and yeah, they learn that way. They remember the spock is the eagle and stakoya, the wolf. They remember them. Oh, wow. Yeah, and they do drumming, and they sing the good morning and um, goodbye song with the drums. So, yeah, they, they take it with them. And then when they go into the other, the higher classes, they continue they continue, so we're building a little foundation for them here to take when they do go. So it's not new for them. Yeah, for me, I couldn't, when I was growing up, I couldn't do that. I 
I could hear my parents speak sometime, but when they knew we were listening, they stopped talking or they moved or they asked us to leave because we weren't allowed to learn the language. So that was one of the reasons that I was so, so intent on learning it because it was lost and it was getting lost. So we hear changing from what I used to hear. You can, it, there's a different dialect. We'll never hear the old, old, old speakers again who just talk because they could. And we do because we need to and keep it going. It's just different. It's written and it's recorded. My daughter works at Kokalitsa and they do much recording. She's found recordings of all our elders, our old elders speaking and dancing and singing. And she found a recording of my mom in court who would only speak Hulkamale and fighting for our fish. And and she did it in her language. So it was powerful. The importance of it, of the importance of your language, I probably couldn't, couldn't uh, say that enough because it's culture and who you are. And uh, I don't, we have teachers, the language has been taught in university, college, and it's very, very important to us to have it continued. I don't know how to stress that enough. It's just when you have got to uh, where we were from residential school, not being able to speak it and wanting so bad to learn. I always remember wanting to learn the language but not being able to, that we asked our mother, how do you say this? Mom and she'd say like shukwa or something. My dad would get mad at her and say, "Don't do that." So it it's a need. It's a need, and I envy. Like we were down Vancouver, and the Chinese people were talking, and the kids were talking, and everybody was talking their language, and you kind of envy it because they do have it. They've never had to lose it. It's just really hard to understand why, you know. I know it was assimilation and that, and now you feel why, why it was done to us. But it's quite painful, and I don't like to point fingers and blame anybody for it because whoever did it, just they knew what they were doing. They knew how to, to do that, and the people didn't understand. They didn't really probably not understand how important. Some did. They kept it going in different areas, but some were too afraid to have. They didn't understand how important it would be for us to grow up having that knowledge of our language, to cherish. And, yeah. So it's really kind of hard to explain, but you feel it. You don't realize it, and then when you say culture, people think of beads and feathers and all that stuff, and to me, that's not my culture. <laughs> no, it's my environment, the river, the mountains, just the surrounding stuff that I feel. When you go into it, you feel it, a sense of belonging, so it's just I guess unless you've lost it and you try to get it back, then, then uh, no, I guess, yeah. Well, if it's to do with the language, I hope it will keep growing. I hope before I leave this world, I'll see a movie in our language. That's my dream, Bambi. I don't know why, Bambi. I've seen it in other languages. I've written a Christmas story, and it's in Halkamalum. It's a, I don't see it getting published. That wasn't the idea. I wrote it just for uh, teaching, and it's um, it's the sea little cedar tree who wants to be a Christmas tree, and he's out in the yard looking into the window at a decorated tree. 
and he really wants to be a tree. His name's Seek, Little Cedar, <laughs> and he is looking in, he or she, and, and looking at that tree, I want to be a Christmas tree. And then he's told by a grandpa tree that that's not his job. He's a medicine tree, and he's already decorated with snow and birds in his tree. It's, I can't exactly, I wrote it a long time ago, and my granddaughter's reviving it. It's in Halkamalum. I wrote it for school. But things like that, it's a learning to be happy with who you are and that you're important just the way you are because our cedar is used for so much. Yes. But it's a cute little story. And that's all in Halkamalum, to be happy with what you have and who you are is the moral of it. My granddaughter shared it last year with her class. Little things like that, they really mean a lot to kids. It's, we're not always happy about who we are and what we have. And yeah. We have so much to be grateful for.